This special presentation was produced in high definition by WEDU, Tampa, St. Petersburg, Sarasota. This WEDU production is exclusively brought to you through a generous grant from the Gulf Coast Community Foundation of Venice, building strong communities, leadership, partnership, and endowed philanthropy. People preparing to deal with problems that might one day threaten the Gulf Coast, while other people are working to deal with a threat that is already here. We're a hospitable people. Gladly invite guests to enjoy what we have. But not some visitors. These scaly intruders are wearing out their welcome taking homeowners by surprise, forcing out native species. There are an estimated 43 invasive reptiles in the state of Florida right now. Of those, we have uh, five invasive iguana relative type organisms in Sarasota County. Uh, we have a python, two kinds of python, and we obviously have perhaps a few things we're not aware of yet. But it's a very challenging issue to conservation biology. And Meg Lauman teaches environmental studies at New College in Sarasota. Yep, yeah, it's great. She believes Florida is on the verge of a reptile population explosion. In Sarasota County, we've been relatively free of invasive reptiles up until about the last 10 years when we've had relatively warm winters. Now they're surviving through the winters and not only surviving, but they reproduce really successfully. Let's uh, see what we have here. Hopefully we'll start coming across them. Today her students are going out to the field to find iguanas. The first year of growth is amazing. They'll go from this long of the hatchling to like this in one year. George Sierra is the original lizard patrol along the Gulf Coast. Gasparilla Island is probably about 10 miles away, and I took 16,000 iguanas off that little island, just one section of it, and there's probably every bit another 16 to 20,000 left. I just saw one there yesterday. An intimidating specimen himself, George lives and breathes and eats iguanas. It's its own flavor. The meat itself from these guys, the spiny tails, that really doesn't have too much of its own flavor, but it's a really unique texture. So passionate is George about the subject that he wrote a cookbook called Save Florida, Eat an Iguana. If I were to put a book together saying the ecological impact of iguanas on Florida's native wildlife, nobody would have picked it up. This is just a way to educate and entertain the public, you know, so, so we can kind of get everybody on the same, same track. How iguanas and other invasives got to Florida is speculation. One obvious way, of course, unwanted pets. That may have been part of the problem, and some animals may have escaped, and then a hurricane may have relocated a number of animals to the Everglades. So here's a great view of a little iguana. At first, the scaly critters seem kind of cute, but adorability fades. The minute you have iguana poop by the hundreds and you have houses being undermined by their digging, I think you soon change your mind. Even more damaging is what these cold-blooded creatures do to Florida's fragile ecosystem. Uh, the real problem with invasive species is that they take the place or eat the native species that live there, and people really hate to lose valuable native species. Like scrub jays, turtle eggs, keystone species like gopher tortoises. Gopher tortoises are sometimes called that in Florida because other species rely on them for uh, their own quality of life. At this point, I'm pretending my cameraman is my uh my diversion, he's looking there, and I can pretty much come up and just go like that. To educate government employees and concerned citizens, the Nature Conservancy hosted a python capture training course. 
When we're teaching these people uh, how to safely and humanely capture these animals, we really have to impress upon them that they need to be really careful. Pythons are not venomous, but if threatened, they will bite. They don't have hands, so they have recurved teeth, and when they pierce your skin and, and the first instinct is to jerk your hand away, you end up with a lot of lacerations. With a buffet of food sources and few predators here in Florida, invasive reptiles continue to multiply. One python can lay up to 90 eggs, and they can do that every year for a relatively long lifestyle. So if you do the math, you can understand why they now predict there are 30,000 pythons in the Everglades. The solution to eradicate a word that makes some squeamish. I think invasive animals is much more difficult than invasive plants. People seem to be okay with cutting down Brazilian pepper and spraying kudzu, but the minute we deal with an animal that has a nice face, uh, there's a lot of, I think, emotion attached. But if populations aren't controlled now, the reptiles could become costly later in more ways than dollars and cents. The ethics of Eradicating invasive reptiles are really tough because on the one hand, we're killing the native animals if they stay. On the other hand, somebody has to kill the invasive reptiles if they're going to be controlled. So it's not an easy situation. It's, it's a war and that's a difficult thing. When we send any group to war, something doesn't survive. Here on the Gulf Coast, survival of our native species is vital and a war we and they can't afford to lose.